Semiconductors are the foundation of all modern electronics. And it wouldn't be untrue to say that the definition of a semiconductor is a material that has a band gap. Now, in terms of absorption of light or emission of light, the band gap of a material is exploited to create a whole range of devices that touch our everyday lives. So in the case of absorption of light, we're talking about things like solar panels and detectors or each and every pixel that is in a digital camera. And in the case of emitting light, we're talking about things like LEDs or semiconductor lasers. First, I wanted to find what a band gap is. Here's an example graph of the absorption coefficient of cadmium sulfide. The absorption coefficient is simply a measure of how strongly a material absorbs light. When it's zero, it means that the material doesn't absorb at all. Then, as the absorption coefficient goes up, it absorbs light more and more strongly. The band gap is simply the approximate value at which this goes to zero. In other words, it's a sort of dividing line. For light with longer wavelengths, the material is transparent, and for light with shorter wavelengths, it absorbs. To make devices, like solar panels or LEDs, the layers in them need very specific band gap values. Take the example of solar panels. If I design a solar panel that needs a cadmium sulfide layer with a band gap of 2.4 electron volts, but really it ends up being more like 2.2 electron volts, that's going to hurt the efficiency of your solar panel. Also consider the fact that a solar panel is a large area device. So over the entire area of this thing, the uniformity of the band gap is critical. So this is a great role for mapping ellipsometry. Since ellipsometry is able to measure N and K of materials, the index of refraction and extinction coefficient, and K and the absorption coefficient are easily convertible via a simple equation, ellipsometry mapping is an efficient way to measure band gap and check the uniformity over any area you'd like. Keeping with the solar example, Here's an example of mapping a cadmium sulfide film, which, if you haven't figured out already, is a material that's used in some types of thin film solar. From ellipsometry measurements in a grid over the entire sample, we get information about the absorption from each location. And if we compare these, we can see that there's small variation in the band gap, which, remember, is the wavelength at which these lines basically go to zero. The band gap value can then just be plotted spatially, and then we can see the variation over the entire sample. This can be further extended by mapping the sample multiple times between varying processing steps to help understand their effects. So here, we measure the very same cadmium sulfide film after it has had a heat treatment anneal to investigate any changes we find that not only does the anneal generally increase the band gap energy up closer to what would be expected for high quality cadmium sulfide, it induces a systematic change in the spatial trends where now the band gap is lower on the top and higher on the bottom. It's possible that this type of gradient might be caused by non-uniform heating, which would require adjustment to the equipment being used. Consequently, in optimizing the manufacture of solar, or really any other optical devices, understanding your material's band gap properties is critical to squeezing as much performance out of your final products as possible. And ellipsometry is how you get that information.